right guys so again just like I did for the floated end I uh, made me a drawing so that I would have my measurements now again the drawings not necessary the mounting holes will be the same as your tracing uh, but I cut my piece of stock this is a four by four by two inches thick and I just kind of you know same thing took a magic marker and then laid out all my holes for uh, the mounting and just like with the floated end I'll drill it center drill it drill it counter bore it and uh, we'll also do this bearing pocket without flipping it over because it's all going to be from the front side and then we need to do this uh, shoulder all the way around I'm going to manually machine this as well so if you only have a precision Matthews you can see how it's done so let's get out to the mill and we'll get started we'll machine this out Now we've got our counter bore one inch deep. We're going to move over to the next hole and repeat the process. Okay, I had to come back with a different boring bar on these two holes, but luckily I got one that was big enough for my head to go in so I don't have to turn these down and uh, and it didn't poke out the side there. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, so next we're going to start working on our bearing pocket. So let me get set up for that. Okay, so now I'm going to do my bearing pocket. I just center drilled it. I'll just get progressively bigger with drill bits until I can uh, get a half inch in there. Then we're going to get our boring bar set up. We're going to go all the way through. And this is our angular contact bearing pocket for the ball screws. Uh, it's two inches down in the center. Alright, I'm just going to get progressively bigger. Uh, make sure you don't drill into your vise. I've got mine spaced up a little bit. And because we don't want this moving at all when we're doing the bearing, uh, make sure you lock your gibbs down. All right, that looks good. We're gonna change this bit out. I'm gonna put a smaller boring bar in here. Okay, so I, I stuck a shorter boring bar in here to make it a little bit more uh, stable. And I'm just going to ever slowly increase the diameter of this bore until it fits uh, my angular contact bearing, which happens to be 35 millimeters. I'm going to take my time. When I get really close, I'll just go down just a little bit, check the fit. The first two or three millimeters is not going to be critical because we're going to have a bearing cover go in there. So you got plenty of uh, opportunities to get it right. I'm 
Okay, I'm pretty close to my 32.8. So what I'm gonna do is I'll tighten down my fine adjustment. Take it all the way down to 32. Okay, well I'm really close right now. I'm a little over 34 millimeters. Uh, this is the critical stage. So what I wanna do is just, I'll just ever so slowly move this out. And then I'm going to uh, bore down a little bit, and I'll take my measurement, and I'll just keep doing that. I don't want to go too far. Uh, once I get it adjusted to the, rec uh, the correct diameter, then I'll go all the way down. Remember that bearing cover goes down in here, and that dimension for the first three millimeters is not critical uh, as far as the bearing goes. So you want to get it exactly right before you go all the way down. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting it until I get the just right. All right, well, we finished up boring our pocket for the bearings, and I'm really pleased with the way these fit. Uh, they're not a press fit. However, they're snug. Um, I didn't want a press fit because if I have to change these bearings for whatever reason, uh, I want to be able to not have to take the mount off and press them out. As long as you don't have a lot of waddle, the, with the two bearings both being in there, I think uh, it's going to be just fine. So I wanted the bearings to fit snug, but also be able to remove them if I had to. Uh, remember there's going to be a spacer in there, and our bearing cover is going to go down in there. The depth on this was 32.8 millimeters and that gives me enough room to get my spacer in there and the bearing cover. Now, if you'll recall in the drawing there's four holes for the bearing cover and four holes to mount the spacer. Those holes I will bore later. After I make my bearing cover then I'll use that as a template to mark these holes. That way I don't have to worry about any kind of misalignment. And the same thing for the spacer. Uh, once I get it made, then I can bore the holes to mount it. Just makes things easier. So next, we've got to do our uh, rabbit, I guess you would call it. Our offset right here for our bearing spacer to slide down on. That's a quarter inch each direction and three quarters of an inch down. So, all right, so I've got it set in here and I've set my depth. I went ahead and went full depth on the end mill and then I'm just gonna gradually move the workpiece in and go back and forth until I get my quarter inch this way. Uh, so let's get this milled out.
All right, so we finished putting our three quarter inch deep uh, shoulder all the way around our bearing block. And all we have to do now is we're going to come in here and bring this back all the way to this edge straight down. That'll give us clearance uh, for our table to go between the saddle. But when you get to this point right here, you need to go back and forth and take just a little bit off each side until you get the square tubing to fit directly over it. And go ahead and cut yourself a piece of square tubing. Now this tubing is not perfect on the uh, inside. Uh, these edges get squeezed in a little bit sometimes. So it may take you it fits this direction but if I turn it 90 then it's tight. So just be mindful of that. And then you want it to be flush all the way around and as long as it's flush then you know that your ball screw is going to be directly in the center and that's all we're looking for we're just this right here just helps us keep everything in the center center when we put our uh, motor mount plate on the back here it'll also be directly in the center and everything should line up so Make sure you check with the material that you're using. All right, so now that we've got the shoulder cut, uh, now we just need to come through here and give this some relief so that it'll clear in between the saddle and we can get the full extent of the travel. And so I'm gonna notch this right here. So let me get that set up and we'll come back. All right, so now I'm set up I flip my bearing block over and we're going to do this relief that will be flush with the side here and that's going to allow the bearing block and the X table to go in between the saddle and it's going to give me about another three inches of travel I hope. In the drawing this is a little bit more sweeping curve but I've got a 3 8 inch end mill in here and because I'm manually machining it's just going to be a 3 8 inch uh, radius here or a half inch or excuse me a 3 16 inch radius now I'm just going to take my time just keep working it back and forth until I remove this material So you can see we've got this relief here on the sides now. Turned out good. Uh, one last thing we need to do is bore two holes for our alignment pins. Uh, knock all these corners off. And uh, we'll be done with this for now. We do still have to come back and drill the mounting holes uh, for the bearing cover. And also the mounting holes for... Uh, the spacer, but we'll do that uh, after we get the holes After we get the spacer made and after we get the uh, bearing cover made So let me get set up. We'll put these last two holes in here and clean this up and Then we'll be finished Okay guys, so you can see we've got our finished uh, X bearing block These bolts will go in here like so and then they'll clear for the spacer. And they give me about oh a half inch is all I need sticking out. But it turned out good. I'm pretty satisfied with it. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is start working on the spacer. And I want to get that uh, machined so that I can bore the holes for this to mount it. And then we can work on the bearing cover. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to ask questions and leave comments. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the link below. And most importantly, be safe.